Well, praise God. Welcome. We are here Sunday morning, and this is Pentecost Sunday. We are so excited. Thank you for joining us. Come and grab a tea, grab a coffee. This is church, Le uh, Bon right? Church is not, we've not known, but this is still church. This morning, we're praying um, and talking about the Holy Ghost. We're going to be talking about how the Holy Spirit um, is able to empower you and the Holy Spirit is able to uh, encourage you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, I can see a whole lot of people online. Just give us a thumbs up if you can see and you can hear okay. And we'll just get ourselves ready for worship. Let's pray. Let's just pray this morning before we start, right? And let's just put a foundation of prayer um, as we continue uh, this service and this gathering together. So thank you for being part of the Rock Church. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that this Sunday we are celebrating Pentecost, hallelujah, the empowering power of the Holy Ghost. And so God, we recognize your deity, we recognize your power, and we recognize the gift of your spirit. So Holy Spirit, in every house, and every home, right now, in every lounge, in every bedroom, in in every garden, in every car, wherever people are watching us from, God, may you empower people with your presence. God, thank you for your presence. One touch from you, oh God, changes eternity. So God, may you touch your people. May you touch your sons and daughters uh, this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we thank you for joining us. Would you do me a favor? Would you like and share this page? Let's get as many people watching as possible. Um, And as you're doing that, we're going to ask Conrad and Sarah, let's give them a round of applause as they're going to lead us in worship. (laughs) And we're going to have an incredible time. Um, Can I switch? Can I step down? Are we on this camera? Okay, we're going to have an incredible time this morning in God's presence, just trying to keep our two meter distance. Let's worship him. Let's get excited. Let's get Pentecostal, right? Let's kick off our slippers and let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord, everyone, and let's give God some glory on this day of Pentecost. Now, when I was a younger child, and, and Sarah can actually confess to this as well, there used to be a song that we rose on the Pentecost day. Um, we ain't got music with this, but I just want you to just sing this, clap your hands in your homes. It's called The Sound of Pentecost. So, Sarah, take it away. This is the sound of Pentecost. Come on, clap those hands. This is the sound. This is the sound of, of Pentecost. Pentecost. All over the world. All over this world. All over this world. All over this world. All over this world. All over this. All over this. All over this world. This is the sound of Pentecost. This is the sound of. Pentecost, all over this world, all over this world, all over this, all over this, all over this world. This is the sound of Pentecost. This is the sound of Pentecost, all over this world. This is the sound of Pentecost. This is the sound of Pentecost. All over this world. Come on, sing it. All over this world. All over this. All over this. All over this this world. Let me hear you. This is the sound of Pentecost. This is the sound of Pentecost all over this world, all over this world, all over this, all over this, all over this world. Amen. A good start to Pentecost. Amen. All over the world because what happened on that day impacted the world greatly. Even you, it impacted you till this day. Hallelujah, over 2,000 years ago. 
Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost came and sat upon the heads of the people in worship. So let the Holy Ghost come and sit upon your head in worship Amen. and begin to speak those things as though they were not, but they are actually. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we're going to go into our first worship song here. Hallelujah. Up from the ashes. Come on, yeah. Hallelujah. Up from the ashes, your love has brought us out of the darkness and into the light. Healing our hearts To a God we lift up one voice To a God we lift up one song To a God we lift up one voice Hallelujah To a God we lift up one voice To a God we lift up one song To a God we lift up one voice Singing Hallelujah have been broken, eyes have been opened, an army of dry bones is starting to rise, death they defeated, you are victorious, you are alive, oh, to our God, to, to our God, God, we lift up one voice, to our God, we lift up one song.
just for you and I. I want you Amen. to just, just type out what God has done for you by his Holy Spirit. Come on, just type it out. Give a testimony of the greatness of God and how that Pentecost day has impacted your life because it has impacted the whole wild world. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Come on, you keep glorifying him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what is holding you bound, no matter what, chains are there. They will be broken. And now we're going to go into our next worship song, Break Every Chain. I want you to think in your minds what has held you bound for such a long time, what has bothered you for such a long time, and just see those chains dropping to the ground. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. To break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Do you believe that this morning? To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. power of the Holy Ghost. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. And there's an army rising up. Oh, there's an army
Hallelujah. In Christ, there is no more people that will be bound. But the key is, is to be in Christ. Hallelujah. To experience them. The Holy Ghost leading, the Holy Ghost guiding, the Holy Ghost protecting, hallelujah, and the Holy Ghost delivering, hallelujah, on this day of Pentecost. So, don't keep your voices quiet. <laughs> we're going to shout to the Lord, hallelujah. All the earth, we're going to sing. Make sure I can actually hear your voices through that screen, through that camera lens that I'm looking into. I want to hear your voices in your homes. Declare, shout the name of Jesus. When those people in the upper room were filled with the Holy Ghost, people outside heard. It wasn't kept quiet. Those outside were hearing it. They were hearing tongues of all different languages and that they can interpret this to know that Christ is still God. Amen. Amen.
let's just take this time, hallelujah, take this time to just glorify him. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Come on, sing it. Nothing compares to the promise. Hallelujah. Nothing compares, no. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have. No, nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares. To the promise I no 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 nothing compares to the promise I nothing compares nothing compares to the promise I nothing compares nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Hallelujah. I just feel the Holy Spirit here right now. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify your name, Jesus. We bless your name, God. There's nobody like you, Lord God. You are a strong tower, Lord God. You are our peace, Lord God. You revive us again. Lord, send your Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost and revive us. Revive us, Lord. Help us to feel you, Lord God, even though sometimes it may feel like you're not near but God you please Lord Jesus come by here good Lord rest among us Father Jesus let us know you are here you're wonderful you're beautiful you're powerful and you are all encompassing God and you Lord God are the one that keeps me safe hallelujah only you we can put on mask we can wear gloves we can have the two meter distance but you know what the one that keeps us safe, the one that keeps us well, the one that keeps us healthy is the almighty God. Hallelujah. Don't be mistaken. Don't be mistaken that he's out of this. He's very much in this and doing his work. He's still wonder working God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing our last one now. What a beautiful name it is. Just call upon his name. Come on, you type in Jesus. Yes, just type in Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, call his name because there is power in that name. It's a beautiful name. It's a wonderful name. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Were the world at the beginning one way
You see, these hands were made as antennas of praise. These hands were made to glorify him and to feel out the atmosphere, to feel the presence of Jesus. So right there in your homes, you can lift your hands and you can feel the atmosphere and the glory of God come resting upon you. Hallelujah! There's nothing compared to my God. There's nothing compared to him. Hallelujah! No rival. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing can be squared up to what my God is. Hallelujah! I just feel to worship him. I just feel to worship him. I just feel to worship him. Hallelujah. You're worthy, 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 worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. You have no right. Hallelujah of our lives. Come on, just give him one more shout Hallelujah. and say thank you, God, for your day of Pentecost. Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Well, we thank the Lord. Guys, thank you for leading us in worship on this exciting day. Grab your seats, grab your Bibles. I'm going to try and get some stuff up. Let's get ready for the Word of God. I don't know if someone could give me a, give me a hand and perhaps possibly bring that lectern up for me, please. Um, you can bring that one. Yeah, it'd be easier. Amen. Praise God. I'm not sure what camera I'm on. If, on, on that one. Okay, brilliant. Well, guys, um, good morning. Welcome. Um, we've, I've asked some of the guys in the church here just when, if they can be a bit more vocal this morning. So it sounds like we've got church going on. <laughs> That's more like it. This is Pentecost. Amen. You know, in the more traditional Pentecostal churches, um, I mean, Pentecostal Christians have always been known to be a little bit crazy. And I know of people that used to go to church services just to see what was going to happen on a Friday night or on a Sunday night because you'd have people running, you'd have people shouting, you'd have people Pentecost and excited. When you know that Jesus is alive, when you know that God is alive, it puts a fire in your belly. There's an excitement in your tummy. Amen. You get excited and passionate for God. Hallelujah. Well, if you've got your Bibles, let's turn. Are we still on that camera? 
Okay, let's turn, let's go over to this camera because there's a long time on one camera. Come on. Um, there's more people over here as well, so that's good. So we can <laughs> um, if you look at uh, the book of Acts chapter 2, if you want to turn there, let, let, let's do that now. I'm going to click there. You might turn there or you may click there or swipe there, depending on what device you're using. But let's read about Psalm, about Acts chapter 2. Um, and let's read about what actually happened. So um, after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. He spent uh, how many days? Come on, church, Sunday school class. How many days? Oh, I'm disappointed. How many? 50. 50, thank you. <laughs> I, was just, I was just testing people. 50 days Jesus spent and then he ascended. And as he ascended, he said, I'm going to prepare. I'm going to make a way. I'm going to prepare a room. And we do laugh and joke because in the NIV it says room. And in King James it says uh, mansion. It says house. So God was going to prepare a room. He said, but I'm going to send a comforter. I'm going to send the helper. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So you must wait for him. So we come to Acts chapter 2, where the people of God have been waiting for um, the Holy Spirit, the gift and the promise. And then so they're praying, they're seeking God's face, and they're asking the Lord, they're saying, God, we are seeking you and we are waiting for you. And there's a principle in that, even before we go any further. When you seek God and you wait upon God, God answers. Uh, many people are impatient, many people won't seek, and many people won't wait. But if you seek and wait on God, then God is a God that answers. We're going to learn this morning, he's a God that answers by fire. Amen. God is a God that answers by fire. Acts chapter 2. And let's just read from verse 1. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, it says, they were all together in one place and suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. It filled the whole house where they were sitting and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were men in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment uh, because each one heard their own language uh, being spoken. Utterly amazed, they said, on all these people speaking Galileans, and then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? And then it goes on to list all the nations that were, were from Macedonia, Judah, Caponia, Pontus, Asia, um, Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Rome, and then a few of us I can't even get there, right? And then it goes on, and then it says, amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Okay, let's back up just for a second. When the day of Pentecost came, verse 1, they were all together in one place, all together in unity, in one place, right? They were all together in one place, um, and then suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. It filled the house where they were sitting, and they saw what seemed to be tongues um, a fire that was sitting separately on each of us heads now let me tell you this a relationship with Jesus isn't just a a a quiet um, introverted kind of relationship when God turns up God turns up amen so <laughs> when God turns up into your life regardless of your character type when he turns up he turns up and so this morning we're going to talk about God turning up right now in your lounge in your living room and we're going to talk about how God can turn up they, they say well how can this be what's happening here I don't understand it we hear all these people um, and then I don't quite understand um, w what exactly is happening and uh, if you actually look a bit further down here what verse did we get to there Oh, I've skipped a little bit much. Acts chapter 2, verse 13. Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. He raised his voice and he addressed the crowd. And he said, fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain to you. Then this is, this is what Peter says. Listen very carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what 
was spoken to the prophet Joel. And you may be familiar or not familiar with that, that, that prophetic word, but this is the prophetic word from the book of Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit and all people, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Let's just stop there for a moment, okay? In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. No matter if you're black, no matter if you're white, no matter if you're male, no matter if you're female, no matter what country that you're watching us from now, the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon you on the last days. We are living in the last days. Can I get an amen? Okay. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your sons and daughters. Will, what's prophecy? Prophecy is a gift from God. There's gifts from God that he gives to his people. So when you become filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not the same person. You start to operate in gifts of the Spirit. One of them is prophecy. One of them is to speak words of God over people, over nations, over situations that you don't know these words yourself. God is speaking to you these words and you're foretelling and you're prophesying or you're confirming and you're edifying. And the word prophecy is just basically you as a vessel to be used for God. Do you want to be used as a vessel for God this morning? Well, it says, your young men, sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on the servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens above, the sign on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon and the blood and before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Let me just talk for a moment about the God uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, it's the same God in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament, God would answer by fire. And uh, in the New Testament, God answers by fire. But there's a difference of the fire then, and there's a difference of the fire now. So let's just talk about the fire of God and how God answers by fire. Because the, when you have a fire in your belly, you're able to do the impossible. There's a national park over in, in America. And in that national park, I'm just going to swap cameras myself, I think. In national parks in America, uh, they had a, um, a yearly annual event, and it was called the fire fall and this yearly annual event what they would do is all the trees that had fallen during that 12 months in the park they were put to one side and then once a year they would go onto the top of this cliff mountain it was it, it the, the mountain was was made out of uh, like slate and there was no vegetation on that mountain it was just a cliff face and what they would do is they would pile all these uh, logs or these trees at the top of the mountain everybody would stand in a safe distance at the bottom they would pour petrol over these these trees right and when it went pitch black they would set fire to the mountain uh, set fire to the um, uh, trees and then they would get a, a jcb and they would push the logs off and what would happen is, is these logs would roll down the cliff face right come off the end and then just drop into the uh, uh, into this slate pit and people would stand back and they would just see what they would describe as a fire of waterfall and they were just dropping down dropping down well there was one man who had been as a as a child had been every year to this fire fall uh, event at this national park and then um, he missed uh, 10 years or whatever it was and he thought in his adulthood I want to go back I want to take my children and we want to see this spectacular thing that I used to see every year right when I was a child so we went back on the same date and he got there and he was waiting for this event and he was asking around and and nobody really knew about it or some people said about it but when he actually met a park ranger and he, he spoke to this park ranger and he said well you know what time is this this the, the, the fire falling and the park ranger said, oh, I'm sorry, sir, the fire doesn't fall anymore, right? And they had cancelled the event. So no longer did the fire fall anymore. But what's interesting is this. The words, the fire doesn't fall anymore. And I just wonder, in your life and in my life and in your church and in my church, I wonder if those words are true of the park ranger. I wonder if the fire doesn't fall anymore, 
because the Holy Spirit is not just a one time fire fall in your life, have one experience. God wants to fall, his fire wants to be prevalent and he wants to be real in your life every single day of your life. Can I get an amen? Amen. We need the fire to fall again in our church. Amen. We need the fire to fall in our lives. We need the fire to fall uh, within our personal relationship with God. Let me give you a few scriptures if you're taking our notes. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. It says, our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Our God is a consuming fire. Malachi 3 chapter 2. It says, for he would be like... um, refined as a fire Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4 the Lord will wash away the filth of the woman of Zion he will cleanse the blood stains from Jerusalem by the spirit of judgment um, of fire Matthew uh, chapter 3 and verse 11 uh, this it says I will baptize you John says with water for repentance but after me comes one who is more powerful than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire amen so one of the things we can put down in your notes is number one the fire of God symbolizes his deity the fire of God symbolizes the deity God answered by fire God is a God of fire God answered by fire it says that um, the people of Israel would have a cloud by day over the tabernacle and a fire by night uh, we know that the, uh, the, the prophets right uh, and the prophets of Baal God answered by fire we know that God is a God that answers by fire so don't be surprised in the book of Acts where there was tongues of fires on people's heads what does fire do fire puts a fire effects fire puts a, a fire in your belly do you have a fire a passion of God in your belly number two the fire of God is the symbol of God's approval the fire of God is a symbol of God's approval. So number one is a symbol of his deity. Number two is a symbol of his approval. And, and says this in Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 22. Then Aaron lifted his hands towards the people and he blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering and the burnt offering and the fellowship offering, he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering, the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down God answers by fire amen Amen. God answers by fire Genesis chapter 15 we talk about a story here where Abraham takes five animals and he he separates these five animals he puts half on one side he puts half on the other side and it says then as they were separated as an offering to God it says there was a flicker there was a flame and it says God walked through the center of the sacrifice in fire Amen. God answers by fire. Um, We find that the father of Samson, um, we find in in Judges chapter 13 and verse 9, it says, Fire shot out of the rock, um, and an angel came down. And the word says that the angel did wonders, and it might be in your in your scriptures, uh, shouted. Or in yours, it might say dance, but the angel danced in the fire. Amen. Let me read that again. Judges chapter 13, verse 9. It says, fire shot out the rock, and the angel came down and danced. Amen. God is a God that answers by fire. Number three, the fire symbolizes God's presence. The fire symbolizes God's presence. Amen. And it says this. It says in Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5. And I myself would be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord. And it would be its glory within. Talking about the city walls of Jerusalem. And I myself would be a wall of fire that surrounds it. We sing a song um, that says there's another in the fire, don't we? That's the song we sing. That's a Hillsong song. And it's saying that a fire being a, 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 a place of a tough time and a tough season, and you're in that fire, and you sort of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and you're in that fire. And whilst you're in that fire, uh, it says with the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was a fourth. Uh, and the king said didn't we put three people in why can I see a fourth I see a fourth person like the son of man and so that story saying that God is is with you when you're going through the fires of destruction when you're going through a 
difficult situation and time. But that's one kind of fire. But the fire that we're talking about is not the fire of destruction, right? We're talking about the fire of uh, refining, the fire of purifying, the fire of anointing, the fire of uh, 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 positivity and growth. Um, I heard another story um, about um, uh, another national park in Canada, this one was, and they had red trees, and these red trees are very tall and very high red trees. And uh, what happened was is that uh, the, the over history um, there would be a lot of bushfires in this forest and so the uh, smart people and the scientists and the park people were trying to work out how can we prevent bushfires from happening so they had come up with some clever way of preventing bushfires from happening but wh while they were preventing these bushfires they started to realize that these red trees over the years had got less and less and less and they couldn't understand it because there was now less fires but what they actually found out was these are natural fires that occurred right it meant that the seed the acorn from these trees right that would be covered in um, callus um, as they came and dropped from the tree um, the seed wasn't able to break through that callus wasn't able to break through that tough shell um, you know of, of just the environment that they were in but what used to happen was when there was a fire the actual heat of the fire would burn away the callus which would allow the uh, seed to be able to sprout and create more red trees. So they started to realize that we need more fires. And sometimes the fire that comes in your life, right, where you see it as being the enemy, sometimes it's God. And sometimes that fire burns away stuff in your life. And sometimes the Holy Spirit um, causes things in your life to be, to be burnt away. You don't like the process, but you know the process is a positive and a good process. So allow the fire of God to put a passion in your belly, but also allow it to refine you as gold. Amen. Um, Charles Spurgeon, famous guy, uh, Charles Spurgeon said this. Put some fire, uh, it, Charles Spurgeon said, put fire in your sermon, right, or put your sermon in the fire. Amen. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that when we preach the word of God, there needs to be fire. When you preach the word of God, there needs to be passion. When you tell somebody about Jesus, right, you can't just be, oh yeah, well, I, I, I met Jesus and now I'm happy, right? You've got to allow the Holy Spirit inside of you to bring a joy, to bring a passion, and to bring a fire. Amen? So your life is the sermon. Amen? Your life, the way you live. You know, put fire right in your life. Put a passion in your life. Uh, First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands for the Spirit of God uh, gave us does not make us timid but gives us power love and self-discipline let me read that again for this reason i remind you to fan into flame the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of hands for the spirit of god does not make us timid but it gives us power love and self-discipline amen so we must understand that our minds need to be renewed and our minds need to be shaped and we need to understand that we have this power of God inside of us um, in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 20 it says without wood right a fire goes out and this is really important here because the Holy Spirit, um, through the laying on of hands, through the receiving in faith, uh, the Holy Spirit, you can be baptized in the Spirit. But people seem to think once I'm baptized in the Spirit, that's it. No, no, no. What's really, really important is when you're baptized in the Spirit, you need to keep the fire that God's put in you a lit you need to keep the fire that's put in you a flame and in proverbs it says without wood the fire goes out whose responsibility is it to stop the fire and i think this is a life-changing um uh, thing i'm going to say now because a lot of people think it's god's job to stop the fire to stoke the fire it's not god's job 
Now, God gives you the wood to stoke the fire, but you're the one who has to put the wood on the fire. So what's the wood? The wood is the word of God. The wood is prayer. The wood is worship. The wood is fellowship. Uh, that wood uh, is available for you to access. God has given you his word. God's given you opportunities to worship. God's given you opportunities to pray. But you must pick up that wood and put it into the fire. So therefore, don't just sit around and wait for God to do it. Um, on the day of Pentecost, he filled them with the Spirit and they were filled. But now they, their relationship with God begins. The relationship with the Holy Ghost begins. So when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's in you, the Holy Spirit now wants fellowship with you. The Holy Spirit now wants to talk with you and he wants you to talk with him. So therefore, you need to stock the fire in your belly. Pray. Worship. Amen. Uh, spend time in God's word. And that is stocking uh, the fire. The Holy Spirit will come into your life when you're obedient uh, to him. One of the things that I, I want to mention here um, is that the fire of God, right, is the symbol of God's approval. And when the Spirit is upon you and the anointing is upon you, then you've been approved by grace, by the blood of Jesus. And, uh, you know, you've been approved of the in-working um, miracle of Christ in you. Amen. Uh, when you invited Christ into your life, when you invited him and confessed him as Lord and Savior, he comes on the inside of you. Okay, but the anointing of God that's upon your life, right, that outward, that outward expression of an inward God, that's up to you. That's up to you and God. That's up to the anointing. So when the anointing rests upon you, you know, the, in the Old Testament, it says that they would put um, oil upon the, the head um, and it would drip down the beard of Aaron, it says. And the anointing would be the oil on the outside. In Acts chapter 2, it's the, it's the tongues of fire on the head, but there's an indwelling miracle. There's a miracle on the inside that's happening to you. But some people have it so deep on the inside that you never see it on the outside. Well, God does the inside anointing. God does the inside miracle, but you need to respond to the outside. Amen. You need to respond to the outside miracle of God. What's God doing on the inside of you? What can we see on the way that you speak and the way that you act and the way that you conduct your life? Can we see what God's doing on the inside of you? There's a scripture uh, about the, um, the, the virgins. I'm sure I had it down here where there was the oil in the lamp and then one, one that they run out of oil and... Sorry? Matthew 25. Matthew 25. I thought I had it written down here. Um, and they run out of oil. And then the women that have run out of oil turn to the other women and say, can I have some of your, can I have some of your oil? Uh, the, whole, the whole premises of the story was is that the women were in charge of making sure that the oil was in their lamp. God wasn't in charge of the oil. Now, God created the oil, and the oil represented the Holy God. God created it, but they were responsible for putting the oil in the lamp. So this morning, you have access to the Holy Ghost. You have access to the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, righteousness, self-control. And I think there's maybe two I've missed. But there's the gifts of the Spirit, right? God has put into you the gift of prophecy. Um, and, and there's various gifts that may be in you. There's maybe a five-fold ministry gift in you. But you are responsible for outworking that gift God is the oil the Holy Spirit is the oil that's a miracle you couldn't create oil if you tried to right if you wanted to that is God right I'm going to stay here for a moment um, God created the oil right but the truth of the matter is is this right you have to be responsible for making sure that your lamp is filled 
You have to take yourself into worship. You have to take yourself into the word. You have to take yourself into prayer. You have to take yourself into church, into fellowship. You have to click online this morning. You have to be part of the worship this morning. When we worship this morning, you could have sat on your sofa and done nothing, or you could have stood up and worshipped, and maybe you did one or maybe you did the other, but it wasn't God who made you sit, and it wasn't God who made you stand. It was you who made you sit, and it was you who made you stand. So whatever you did and however you responded this morning in worship was your choice and was down to you now it's very clear okay that Moses uh, did I say Moses Abraham when he made a sacrifice of animals he killed the animals right he, he made a blood sacrifice he made an offering he he got himself involved and then God walked through the middle so what's your sacrifice this morning amen where's your sacrifice of praise where's your sacrifice of worship where's your sacrifice of prayer amen we need God in our churches we need God in our gatherings we need God in our in our in our day-to-day -day, in our conversations we need to make sure right that we are seeking God and seeking his face so here's the encouraging news if this morning you've never been baptized in the spirit you can invite the Holy Ghost into your life. You can invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And you can just ask the Holy Spirit. Here it says through the laying on of hands. But we're not able to lay hands on you. But we can pray for you. That you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. Then you need to start living like somebody who's filled. Sacrificing like somebody who's filled. Praising like somebody who's filled. Worshipping like somebody somebody is filled studying like someone is filled praying like somebody he's filled with the holy ghost amen the holy ghost will come into you and he'll do miracles inside of you the holy ghost will do incredible things inside of you but you need to be positioning yourself in the right place you need to be positioning yourself in a place of worship a place here it says about the i think we read it a little bit early on about the the mind about your mind being renewed by the gift of god amen well let's just pray a moment if we can just um pray and invite the holy ghost uh, to come into your life if you've never received the holy spirit you never received him as Lord and Savior. Uh, let's just do that now. And uh, if we can just not uh, talk anyone, that would be great. Father, uh, Holy Spirit, we just welcome you now. I pray for every single person, Lord Father, who is asking to be filled with your presence. Filled with your fire. Lord, we know that your fire, it burns away. Lord Father, the, uh, the stuff in our life that is not healthy is not good. Holy Spirit, you burn away the chaff. You burn away uh, the isms in our life that are not healthy, that are not good. So God, come right now into every person that is inviting you into their life. Fill them in right now. Empower them. Fill them, Lord Father, with your presence. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your love. Fill them, Lord Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord, every person that's asking and praying to be filled, they will be right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, if you've prayed that prayer this morning to invite Christ into your life and you have questions and you want to know um, what to do or whatever it may be, then you can send us through messenger or through info at therockchurch.co.uk um, questions and we are here to pray with you. I can phone you and I can speak with you and we can talk about what the Holy Spirit's doing in you. But remember, the Holy Spirit will put fire in your belly, put speed in your legs. The Holy Spirit will draw you closer to the Father. And so we will talk in more detail <clears throat> about the Holy Spirit maybe over these next few weeks but the most important thing is for us to re recognize at the moment that you can receive him right as the fire of God the presence of God he would give you strength where you have no strength 
Here we give you um, the ability to run and not grow weary, uh, walk and not faint, rise up on wings like eagles. Amen. So uh, we thank God. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit this morning, then we thank God that he's in you. But stock that fire. Come on, don't become a religious person. and Don't become somebody who was once on fire, but now they're not. They were once passionate, but not so much now. Allow the fire to be in you. You are the church, and we need the fire of God in the church. And when we gather together, we're like blocks of wood ourselves, gathering together to create this bonfire. Let's not be like the park ranger that said, well, we don't have the fire for anymore. May we be people that say every day in my life, the fire of the Holy Ghost falls. Amen. Well, let's just stand to our feet. Let's ask the worship guys to come up. Uh, we're going to take our tithes. We're going to take our offerings this morning. And um, if you would like to give, you can give online. There's some information on our website you can go to. And there's also information um, on Facebook. And at the end of this video, in the like little adverts at the end, uh, there's information on there as well of how you can give. We appreciate everybody who gives. And we thank you that as you're obedient to God, as you give and as you tithe, um, that God will bless you and God will favor you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Comrade, what are we going to sing now? Spirit break out. So we're going to sing that song, Spirit Break Out, and we're going to pray that the Spirit of God breaks out in your lounge, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your garden, wherever you're watching us, right? God is going to break out in your home this morning as we sing Spirit Break Out. Amen. Sing louder, let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. Oh, the sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder, let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching us. The sound of heaven touching us. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching that Holy Ghost sound of heaven. The sound of heaven touching a spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Spirit 
break out, spirit break out, feel the presence of Jesus, heaven come down, King Jesus, King Jesus, you're the name we Hallelujah. Amen. Spirit break out. So guys, thank you for watching live this morning. Please like, please share. And then if you're able to, after the notices, we get a few people up here to say hi to you. So at the end of the notices, we will come back for five minutes to say a quick hi to a few people that have been able to help us and make this work this morning. Let's just pray for a blessing over your home, over your family. Pray for a blessing um, over your life in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, in your mighty name, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you just fill every household. You fill every individual, Lord God, that's listening on the sound of my voice. We pray for blessing and favor upon their lives. We pray, Lord God, that your hand of protection will be upon their lives. We pray, Lord Father, that you know every need that is needed. We pray that you will meet every need in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that, God, for those who want more of you, give them more of you. For those, Lord Father, that are uh, concerned about their health right now, bring healing healing to their body in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who just need a touch in their mind, maybe a confusion is in their life. They're not sure which way to go or what to do. Maybe there's a decision that needs to be made right now, Lord God. May they have the mind of you, the mind of Christ, that, Lord, they'll be able to make a decision that's right and correct. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those that need finances to be able to pay bills and be able to uh, uh, pay for food. We pray right now you do a miracle, Lord God, that you will provide rent, mortgage, you will provide food, water, electricity. Lord God, you will provide all of our needs according to your riches in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for those who continue to serve and continue to bless. We pray that you bless their serving and press their give, uh, bless their giving in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord, we pray that your face would shine upon them, Lord Father, that your favor will be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Well, hang around. We're going to have the adverts on now, but hang around, and then we're going to bring a few people, and we've got um, Anoop here. And we've got, uh, he's never been here before, so we, we're here from Anoop. Right, and uh, we got Chico, we got Andes, we got the Andes, right, with us, and then we obviously got Cam Comrade and Sarah, and then we've got a, a very good looking uh, chap with us called Rosario. He will be able to come up and um, show off his diesel top, and so you'll be able to see him in a moment. Have a blessed week, and uh, we'll see you tonight at eight o'clock. Good night, uh, good day, <laughs> and God bless. <laughs>